Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers. But before we start solving this problem, I'm going to show you a graph that should show the solutions. In other words, the intersection points, but there are none. Why? Because there are no real solutions. So the blue one, is that blue? Probably. Uh, is the graph of secant, right? And remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's kind of defined on a different interval. You kind of have to think about the range of secant and range of cosine, of course. And then one half is just a horizontal line, right? And they don't intersect. So no real solutions, great, because this channel is all about complex numbers. So let's get to work. We have secant of z equals one half, right? So secant of z equals one half. So how do we solve for these types of equations? Well, you can draw a triangle, right? Can't you? Well, I can go ahead and write this as one over cosine of z, and from here I get cosine of z is equal to two. But wait, isn't cosine z supposed to be between negative one and one inclusive? Yes, but that's for real numbers. And as we know, z is not real, right? Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and find out what kind of type of triangle can we do. That's definitely going to be a non-real triangle, maybe an imaginary one. So imagine you can draw a triangle like this. And this is my angle z. That's the opposite side. This is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, I'm going to assume this is a 2, and that's a 1. You can also use 4 and 2. You can even use 2 million and 1 million, but it's not that important, right? So, what is the opposite side? Let's use Pythagorean theorem. First of all, let's call this side length A. Okay? Ready for the fun part? A squared plus 2 squared equals 1 squared. A squared plus 4. Oops, I can't write 2. A squared plus... 4 is equal to 1, a squared is equal to negative 3, and a is plus minus the square root of 3i. Awesome. So from here we got plus minus the square root of 3i. Whichever, like, whichever one you like better, pick that. I guess I could probably pick the positive or the principal. Did I call this positive number? Anyways, uh, complex numbers don't have signs like positive or negative, but at least it is a positive multiple of i. So, what does this give me though, right? I mean, can I find z from here? Well, you could kind of go real easy and say, okay, tangent z is equal to square root of 3i over 2. So maybe z is equal to the arc tangent of square root of 3i over 2. Would that work? I guess if you plug it into a calculator, you'll get an answer, but we need more than that. So how do we solve these kinds of equations? I could kind of gave you a, you know, a couple different ideas like triangles and fun stuff. That was, now well, let's take it seriously. So we know that cosine z is 2. We also know that z is not a real number, okay? So how do we find it when z is not real? Because you can't really arc cosine 2. Well, by the way, if you plug this into Wolfram Alpha, I'll probably show you what it gave me, right? Okay, you'll see it at the end. Now, to be able to solve this, I'm going to use Euler's formula. And Euler's formula works like this. Cosine of z plus i sine z is equal to e to the power i z. And then cosine of z minus i sine z. Now I replace z with negative z. That should give me e to the power negative i z. And if you go ahead and add these two equations, if you haven't memorized the formulas, and at least, right? From here we get 2 cosine z equals e to the i z plus e to the negative iz. And if you go ahead and divide both sides by 2, then you get the cosine z. So this is a really powerful formula, and it can basically be turned any cosine that is not a real value into something manageable. Because if somebody told you, okay, cosine z is equal to 10, find z. How am I going to find it, right? But with the second version, you can definitely find it because all you have to do is solve this equation. And can this equation be easily solved? Yes. Why? Because it can be turned into 
a quadratic. You know how? You want to know how? First of all, let's go ahead and write this as 1 over e to the iz and then multiply both sides by 2. So that gives us a quadratic equation if we replace e to the iz with something. How about using a t? Did we use t already in this equation? No, I, I used it in another problem that I, uh, I think uh, made on my other channel, which is cyber math. If you're not familiar with that, go ahead and check it out because we did really cool problems. So make sure to check it out. All right. So now if this is t, this is going to be 1 over t. So we have now t plus 1 over t equals 4. And from here we get t squared plus 1 equals 4 times t or t squared minus 4 times t plus 1 is equal to 0. Great. Do you think t is going to have real values? Yes, because the minimum value for t plus 1 over t is 2, and this is greater than 2. Great. That shows us automatically, because what happens is um, this is greater than or equal to 2, of course, when t is positive. If t is negative, then it's going to be on the opposite side of things, right? Great. So we can solve this problem uh, like equation in so many ways, but the quadratic formula is probably the quickest one or completing the square. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 16 minus 4. That's going to be a 12 divided by 2. As you can see, t is real. 4 plus minus 2 root 3 divided by 2. And t from here becomes 2 plus minus root 3. Awesome. <laughs> we got the t values, but what is t, right? t is e to the power iz. Great. And from there we can go to z. Let's go ahead and set e to the iz equal to t values. Let's start with 2 plus root 3 because that's positive. Wait, 2 minus root 3 is also positive, but 2 plus root 3 is more positive than 2 minus root 3. You know what that means? Like the animal farm. <laughs> well, some numbers are positive, but some are more positive than others. Anyways, how do you solve this type of equation? Well, you kind of have to exponentiate or should I say uh, complexify the right hand side. So we need to write 2 plus root 3 in the form of e to the power something, right? And that can be done because any complex number can be written as r e to the i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value and theta is the argument. So we got to find the modulus. The modulus is itself, the number itself, because this is a real number and it's positive. So we got to find the argument. And the argument is easy too because 2 plus root 3 on the argand plane, you pronounce the D right, is going to be on the real axis, which is on this side. So it's going to be 2 plus root 3, right, with the modulus. What about the angle, the argument? It's 0 radians, right? Or it could be 2 pi or 4 pi. In other words, theta is going to be 2 pi n, a multiple of 2 pi. n is an integer by the way, in case you didn't know. So let's go ahead and quickly do this. This is going to become 2 plus root 3 multiplied by e to the power 2 pi ni. And then you can go ahead and do the natural logs on both sides. That's going to give you iz equals ln 2 plus root 3. By the way, that's a natural uh, real value, the ln, plus 2 pi ni. Now, if n is equal to 0, you get the principal value. And you can evaluate it real quick from here. Just multiply both sides by negative i. From here, z is going to be negative i times ln 2 plus root 3. And if you plug it in, this should work, right? And what about the other solutions? This is the general solution, but we got to need to multiply both sides by negative i again. So that's going to give us, if we do, uh, we're going to get a negative i squared, which is positive 1. So we're going to get 2 pi n minus i times ln 2 plus root 3. Of course, this is for the 2 plus root 3. If you wanted to do the negative one, I mean, it's not negative. I don't know why I keep saying negative. I got stuck on that. But you're just going to replace this number with 2 minus root 3, and it should work exactly the same way. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.